Some people out there say that I am completely incapable of making a short video. Let's put that to the test. Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a fairly short Mahalo Showcase video for this 135th scale German AFV dual fuel drum trailer. The model that you see here is built for my own personal collection, it's not for sale and or purchase, and as I frequently mention in these videos, I take on commission build projects from models ranging between 135th scale and 16th scale. For availability and pricing information, that info would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. This build here is the antithesis of turning a lemon into lemonade, and it's actually something that I had fall on my lap, so why not? Let me just go ahead and build it. The model over here was actually some spare parts from another build that I recently completed on the channel, so I went ahead and just finished off this one here with a few components. In this video, I'll show the parts at the beginning of the project, as well as also I discuss several of the features that I had to build into this thing in order to complete it to the condition that we have here. All this information is going to be found on the video that you're about to watch, so stay tuned, sit back, it should be a fairly quick one. Let's go ahead and kick this one off. And here are the model's components at the start of the build. Like I touched upon earlier, this model here is basically just a tag-along spare part that is supplied with another model kit that I've already built and did a full review on that's on the channel. Well, if you go into that video and you watch the part where I review the kit contents, you'll see that Dragon supplies you with this runner over here that supplies you with the components necessary to assemble the fuel drum trailer. What's cool about the Dragon piece is that they supply two trailers on the single runner. However, you only have enough supply components to build one of the trailers. So when you're done with the project, you're still gonna have an entire trailer and about three quarters of the components to finish it on hand. And well, rather than letting this piece sit and languish away in my spare parts bin, I decided, you know what, let me go ahead and build it up and just add it to my collection. Here you can see the part in better detail. Note that this variant here is the one that houses two of the fuel drums as opposed to the other one that had the single. And because it houses two of the units, you will have more of these little sections that are used to secure the drums in place. We have here the trailing arm as well as also the tube holder that's comprised of this A-frame system that we have here. In addition to these components, I also have a little fret of photo wetch, which again, is just left over from the other kit. This contains the little metal straps that are used to secure the drums to the trailer. However, one of the straps is obviously missing because this was the one that was utilized for that other build. I still have one of the other straps left on hand, but however, I'm on the fence if I'm gonna use it or not just due to continuity. We'll see if I'm going to try to salvage this one or just fabricate brand new ones out of thin strip of aluminum. The next detail component consists of the oil drum itself. Again, this set supplies you with two of these well drums, but one is utilized for the build. So you are going to be left with only a single plastic drum left on hand. However, I have ways to remedy this that I'm going to be touching upon in a second. And it's also true for several of the other parts that are currently absent from this runner, which were used to build the other trailer. And here are the parts now put on the table. All the components here are made from cast resin, and they are casted from molds that I patterned off of the original dragon parts that I touched upon before. During the construction of that model, I went ahead and temporarily took those sections off of the sprue, made molds of them, then once the mold work was concluded, I went ahead, cleaned those parts up further, and they went off to the finished state that you saw in the other video. Well, now that that model is completed, I was able to cast the components that were in those molds, giving you the piece that we see here. These are all the components that are needed to finish off the secondary trailer that was on the runner. We have here a second oil drum along with the oil drum lids. Small little piece of flash on here, but you know, polishes up pretty quickly. We have the wheels, which are basically SDKFZ 250 pattern type wheels. They have their thread pattern on them. Again, you know, it's the Dragon tooling, so it's gonna be pretty good. Here we have the main axle, as well as the little stand that the trailer has towards the front end of the tow bar. These are obviously the leaf springs. This one's still on the sprue, which I need to snip off. And this one here was cleaned up a little bit prior to filming. 
And these little guys over here are the little stands that the barrel rests on that are secured to the trailer. Again, all these pieces are going to be cleaned up and simply just mounted to the trailer as it would the original kit components the way it was designed. I also want to point out that none of these components are going to be sold in any way, shape, or form. These are exclusively just for my own personal use only. They're a bit of a niche item and admittedly these are the type of molds that are going to be sitting in my mold bins for a number of years. But you know, who knows, a rainy day might turn up where I might need a German oil drum or possibly like a SDKFZ250 comes into the shop missing wheels and well, you know, I got replacements now in case that need ever arises. But other than that, yeah, you're probably not going to see this mold being used ever again. And here's the unit fully completed. Let's go ahead and take a quick walk around of the piece in this condition. And this here is the World War II German double fuel drum trailer. During World War II, the Germans had several ways to extend the range of their tanks and other armored vehicles in order to get them to go further compared to just utilizing the standard onboard gas tanks alone. One of the solutions was having just, well, a towed behind trailer that can give you some more extended range. The Germans developed two types of trailers. One was a single drum trailer, and this one here is the dual version. The units utilize the standard Wehrmacht pattern of oil drum. They strap them to the top portion, and then everything is plumped together with a rubber hose, thus topping off the fuel tank when the vehicle is in operation. Generally, you see this type of equipment on German tanks of the early war period. So generally, you'll see them on vehicles like the 38T, the Panzer III, as well as also the Panzer IV. However, I'm not surprised if any other German tanks can have this system fitted in place, as this unit uses the same standard tow hitch design that's found on the other German tanks of World War II. So briefly, starting with the wheels, obviously these are the same cast rest ones found in the previous scene. And because of the way they are casted, they are basically a dead ringer for the original Dragon ones, which is exactly what you're looking for. Same is also true for the remainder of the cast resin parts, which would include the bottom portion that we have over here, as well as those top clips that are used to hold the oil drums in place. Once everything is painted and weathered, it just blends in with the remainder of the unit, basically as if they were made out of the original polystyrene parts. Aside from the cast rest and parts, the other thing to mention are with the straps. Like I stated before, one of the straps was needed for the other build. So I had a half set on hand. Well, I actually utilized those on one of these oil drums over here, and the other set was just fabricated out of thin strips of soda can aluminum. They were carefully cut to the same width with a scissor, and then just mounted in place as I would the original PE. Once again, everything is painted and weathered, it just blends in absolutely perfectly, and if I never said anything, no one would probably notice. And on that note, that takes us to the fuel drums. So the fuel drums again, one of which is cast resin, one of which is plastic. And honestly, I couldn't tell you which one is which. At the time I'm filming this video, it's actually been over a year since I actually built this thing. So your guess is good as mine as to which one is the OG plastic and which one is the cast resin copy. That's really all there is to mention detail-wise outside of the plumbing system that I'll mention momentarily. And this brings us to the paint. So for the paintwork, I wanted to incorporate a dual tone system, just to add a little bit of extra flair and color pop to the build itself. Obviously you can have the units all in Panzer Gray, or you can also have them all in Dunkel Gelb. You know, it just depends on whatever floats your boat. For this one here though, I wanted the dual color because it just adds a little bit of extra color pop to, you know, it was essentially a very simple rudimentary part. So for the trailer, I went with the Panzer Gray. This is the same type of Schwartz Grau that I've mentioned and used on several other builds found on the channel, and the weathering is on the exact same format. The color is exterior latex house paint, as I always mention in these videos. Of course, everything was pre-primed with flat black prior to the paintwork getting added. The Latex is applied via the airbrush. I thin it to the proper consistency and then it just airbrushes on like any other paint. Then from there, the, re the remainder of the weathering was added, which would include the use of filters, washes, and also a bit of dry brushing for good measure. For the drums themselves, I went with Dunkelgelb. I'm not sure if I used Tamiya Dunkelgelb or if I utilized my own 
exterior latex shade. Again, it's been a little while since I built it, but regardless, it was also weathered with the same techniques that went into the trailer itself with use of washes and dry brushing and things along those lines. I also went ahead and utilized the Tamiya Paneline Accent to make several of the details pop on the piece. Now, that's really evident right over here at the end sections of the fuel drums where you have that embossed detailing just popping right out and just makes it look all oh, that much better. Same is also true on details like the rims on the wheels and things along those lines. Of course, on these trailers, there is a reflector right over here on this fender and you know I just painted it with the gloss red for the look that you see here. For weathering of the fuel drums, this is where you get to have some creative, or I should say creativity, and it's also probably the funnest aspect on it. So, of course, these things are filled with, you know, is what they refer to in Europe as petrol, we call it here gasoline, or diesel, depending on the vehicle, but most of the German tanks were gasoline powered. And for the fuel, you know, I, I should say for these cans, it's not uncommon to have, you know, fuel drips and things like that. And these details are, or I should say these features are a great way to add an extra bit of character and color pop to the build. So you can see right here, we have this filler cap. We have some nice spillage going on right there. This is all done with the paintbrush. It's first applied with a very thin paintbrush with Tamiya Flat Black. Then Tamiya Gloss was added for good measure. I did the same thing to the one on the opposite side because why not? And then the spigot right here on the top portion of the German fuel can also has similar effects going on. Something like that is just going to be a magnet for all sorts of dirt and dust to just stick to. And so I just went ahead and weathered it in the format as you see here. Again, same exact techniques were utilized on both. For the other bit of detailing that was not supplied with the kit that I added was with the actual fuel hose that we have here. On the original model that was built up in the other example, the kit gives you a length of string, black thread, in order to facilitate these details. However, on this one here, obviously I didn't have that string anymore, so I went ahead and utilized an alternative solution, which is very thin silicone covered electrical wire. The wire I've used on several other 135th scale builds that can be found on the channel for various things. Namely, this is the, the wire that I tend to use for my searchlights on M60s and other sorts of more modern AFV that have external power cords on them. It's a great wire, it's nice and flexible, it's nice and thin, and it looks really, really nice in its El Natural color. So the wire was added to the top portion over here where I drilled a small hole with a pin vise stuck the wire in, glued it in place, and then I just sculpted it to the format that we have here, to this T-fitting. Again, this, as well as the remainder of the sections, are all kit supplied, which is fantastic. I snaked the wire up through here, and then, you know, I just gave myself a little extra. On the very tip of this section over here, I actually add a little bit of dry brushing of flat black, and then I added some more Tamiya gloss to it in order to give you that, you know, sheen of, you know, gasoline or fuel and it, again it's just a nice little easy way to put the cherry on top of this sundae and that's basically all there is to this build as i mentioned before the parts that built this model over here were spare from this dragon kit that i have here on the table this here is my dragon 135th scale 38t with the single fuel drum trailer and this model here is the subject matter of its very own model showcase video. And of course that can be found on the ECA channel. I'll even have a link to it in the video description below. Long story short, this is a phenomenally detailed kit. It's one that's very nicely done. If you have the drive to build something like this and you have the patience to build the thing with full interior detailing, as well as also with the high levels of exterior detailing that are found on this model, it's definitely something to check out. Regardless, it's nice to have both of the components on hand, as opposed to, again, having one of them languish away in my spare bin, never to be seen forevermore. At this point here, now it could be a nice little display piece and a nice little footnote in my model tank collection. Also, with the two parts here on the table, you get to see how much different the designs are, and you could also compare and contrast with the painting techniques. Like I said this before, this one here is all the same color paintwork as the remainder of the vehicle, while this one here I went with the dual color, as I mentioned briefly before, and you can see exactly just how much color pop it gives by going with the different color format. Again, this is best left up to the discretion of the builder, but it's just something to consider if you're working on a model similar to the one that you see here. 
As I mentioned before, in the end, I couldn't be any happier in how this build turned out. This is another one of those like freebies that just fall into your lap. And you know, it's really nice when you encounter something like this with any of your kits that you have in your stash. Actually, it's kind of stuff like this. When I first started building models, I used to rummage through my father's spare bin, finding, you know, partially completed or half supplied parts and, you know, cobbling them together to something that's a little bit more complete. So in a way, it's kind of like going back to some of my earlier roots. Regardless, this is something that didn't take hardly any work to do. And it's one that now that I have completed, it feels really good to have one thing less in my spare parts bin. And also to have a nice interesting footnote or a nice little interesting piece to add to my collection as well. As for skill level recommendations, well, you know, again, this is a spare part, so I can't really go too much in depth on that. However, this component is supplied with a few other kits that are on the Dragon catalog. I believe there's a Panzer IV kit that gives you these components that we have here. So if you really find this wagon here to be pretty cool, I recommend checking out that Dragon Panzer IV kit in total. So you get to go ahead and build this with the accompanying vehicle. And it's one that, again, leads for a very interesting addition to your collection, as it's something that, you know, some people don't really think about. When we think of tanks, we just think of just the tank itself, but it's really cool when you have other accessories like this that just give the vehicle build just a little bit more, you know, panache, or pizzazz, I should say. Regardless, you know, it's definitely something to check out if you're into, you know, builds like that. And with that, that wraps up this hopefully short mile showcase video for the 135th scale German dual fuel drum trailer. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep updated on new posts of content being 135th scale mile showcase videos like this one over here or my other larger scale project update videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in loop a new post of content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been seen on the channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, and I'll see you all on the next one. Take care.